lovely people, how are you? Uh, I hope you are having a really good weekend. I'm really happy that you liked Thursday's hair curling video. Um, because, yeah, there's gonna be a lot more um, hair videos to come, so watch out for that. And also, thank you for <laughs> yesterday's comments. Quite bad, quite shameful. Uh, video with Clara. There's a second part of that that is coming next week in which I pretty much shame British people everywhere. So today's video however is about spoons. Yeah, yeah, spoons. So I use the hashtag Spoonie quite a lot. Bing. Most people don't know at all uh, what that means, which is pretty understandable. Oh, yeah. It was a word coined by, I'm going to have to read this name out, excuse me, Christine Miserandino, 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 in 2003 in her essay The Spoon Theory on her blog butyoudon'tlooksick.com. It's a metaphor, uh, which you can sign either as metaphor or metaphor. It's a metaphor for energy and the amount of energy that it takes to be a disabled person. Because obviously as a disabled person, the amount of energy that you have for daily living uh, is reduced. Basically, everyone starts the day with a certain amount of spoons. Spoons! So every task that you do requires a certain amount of energy that's sort of, that is then related to one spoon. And you can also recharge your spoons by resting, having a little relax. However, the same task can use different number of spoons for different people. And some tasks use absolutely no spoons at all for some. For example, a shower, yes. Now a shower for some people is an incredibly relaxing. So it recharges your spoons, uh, it makes you feel really good, you're, you know, warm. <laughs> so it's a plus spoons experience for some people. It adds spoons to a little energy bar, like a sim. But for me, a shower uses up a lot of my spoons. It means taking off my clothes, finding the right temperature, which is pretty hard to do if you don't have hands that can feel temperature, or feet, my feet can't feel temperature either. Um, you have to, have to stand up for a long time, that's pretty tiring. My body can't regulate temperature, so it gets very hot. And then I think I'm, I it gets very hot and then I'm going to faint. I have to lift my arms for a long time to wash my hair. And that just sucks my energy. And also it's quite hard because I can't feel the shampoo. And then I'm like, oh, oh. All of the blood rushes down to my feet. I'm about to faint. So then you've got to do the time limit before you faint. And then it's like, did I get the towel out of the cupboard? I don't know. Did I get the towel out of the cupboard? Ugh. Ain't all over because the half of my nails that aren't dead, like, freak out at any kind of temperature. Or whether it's hot, whether it's cold, whatever. Even water. Water really hurts. Don't ask me why. It just does. So obviously, that would be minus two spoons for me, and for someone else, that's plus spoons. Yay! I really should get an award for having hair that is so pretty, despite that. <laughs> Guys, I wash. <laughs> Give me an award. Now, welcome to the part of the video where I use The Sims to illustrate life. Alice has a long-term health condition. Mary does not. Mary does, however, have pretty fly hair. You go, girl. You go. So, Alice starts the day with 10 spoons. Mary starts the day with 30 spoons, which is really ruddy unfair. Mary, that's... You got it good. Okay, we're going to give Alice some really much better hair. There you go, Alice. Today is Saturday. There we go. Sunday. Saturday. I do know my days of the week, I promise. 
So both of the girls need to go into town to buy some food. Ooh, they're gonna go shopping. Now, bear in mind that at the end of the day, you need to have at least one spoon in order to get a good night's sleep. Get up and make breakfast. Get dressed. Put on makeup. All right, Alex, you're not doing too well. Check you have everything to leave the house. Okay, careful there, Alice. Let's have a nap so you can get a couple of spoons back. Walk to the bus stop and wait in the cold. So the bus finally comes, but it's full of people. Oh, my God. Right, Alice, come on now. Flash that disabled badge around. Make someone move. Don't be a martyr. Sit down. Mary, you can stand. Work out that call. I'm good for you there, Mary. Oh, I see you've also been to the gym recently, doing some Pilates too. Very nice. Looking good, looking good. Well, Alice, at least you made it out of the house. We're at the supermarket. Yay, we're going to go all the way around, we're going to do lots of walking, make confusing decisions, really think about how we should have made a better list before we got here. But we didn't. Oh, what are we going to buy for this week? What are we going to eat? Oh my God. Alice, careful. Jeez, you better head straight home. Mary pops to the health food shop because, I mean, soy yogurt there is just so much cheaper. And she also needs to go to the post office and the gift shop and then she kind of takes a look in that fancy new boutique and Tom is really nice. So we get to the bus ride home. Still carrying those bags though, just take it out of you. Back to the house, oh, I've got to walk to the house from the bus stop, carrying bags. Okay. Mm. Oh, Alice. Okay, get to the sofa stack. Don't worry about putting stuff away, just lie down. <sighs> okay, Alice is awake again. Good, good. Right, time to put away the food. Right, now you both need to wash your hair, so jump in the shower, guys. Order. Oh, Bloody hell, Alice. No, you don't take a shower next time. All right, time to slouch on the sofa in your PJs. Chillin' out. Ah. Then they both get a call from Claire, who wants to go to the cinema. Lovely Claire, she's so sweet. She's always asking us. So Mary's like, yeah, let's go. Woo, so excited. Also, she has loads of energy. So she just rips off those PJs, puts on another outfit. She's out the house in no time. Oh yeah. She'll be there in 20 minutes. Oh, Alice. Um, sorry, dear. Maybe you, you should just stay home. Tell Claire you'll meet her next time, but you've already done two things today, so. After all, I mean, she's only got two spoons. It's going to take her two spoons to get there, and then what? Then she has no spoons. How's she going to get back? Sorry, Alice. Not on the sofa for you. Mary had a great time, though. She went to a bar after the cinema. She and Claire were like, yeah, dancing to the early hours. Oh, Alice, Alice just watched TV and then dragged herself to bed. I mean, Alice doesn't mind though, because she used to be so ill and have so few spoons that she needed help even getting to the toilet, which... No, wait, yeah, there's a point. Okay, go ahead, Alice. I have to take a spoon from you for every time you had to walk for the toilet. So, that's how spoons work. Did that make sense to you? Uh, did you learn anything? Do you like Alice's new haircut? Let me know. People with chronic illnesses, autoimmune deficiencies, or disabilities often use Spoonie to describe ourselves. But do you use it? How do you feel about it? I like the word disabled. I don't think it's a terrible word, as you've seen from my videos. <laughs> Watch them. But also, I kind of prefer Spoonie because it's a bit under the radar. And often it feels really odd to just kind of declare yourself. Like, why? Disabled. I'm not gonna walk into a room, that's. That is not what you introduce yourself first. I would just go with Jessica, but also disabled. <laughs> no, it's, it's like going walking into a room again. Let's be in. So personally, um, I do think that there are flaws in the spoon theory. Mainly that not everyone can recover spoons from resting or even from sleeping. There are a lot of disorders where nighttime and sleeping are causing you the most problems, insomnia. And I mean, I know that naps don't always actually make me feel better. And then there's also part of the theory that says that you can borrow spoons from the next day, which I don't think you can, it doesn't actually work that way for me. Although if I end the day, and I don't have any spoons, then I know that tomorrow I'll get fewer than I would have done but that doesn't mean I have more energy today. It just means that tomorrow will be worse. 
I know that there are also people with disabilities that don't affect their energy levels, but they use the Spoonie theory to describe how tiring it is to kind of be passing as non-disabled. Is that you? If so, please leave me a comment because I really want to hear from you and hear what that's like and hear how that affects your life. Finally, it's my birthday on Wednesday. Yeah, that's the 25th of January, if you were wondering and wanted to send me a present. Uh, we are flying off to Budapest to celebrate. I don't know the sign for Budapest. However, I will still be releasing videos with my new filming schedule, which means Thursday, Friday and Saturday there will be videos, but I am going to film them at the start of the week. Get ready! <laughs> for the Budapest videos which will be the following week as in the first week of February. Yay! So yeah loads of stuff in this video. Get down there in the comments, tell me your views, tell me your opinions, tell me your life experiences because you know I love hearing about everybody's, everybody's life. I don't know the details of everyone's life. I'm such a busybody. Stick my nose on everyone. Don't worry about it. <laughs> I'll see you next week. Mwah.